Thank You Conference. I joined the Labour Party 25 years ago. I had spent almost all my life growing up under Conservative governments. At our state school, our sixth form was two prefab huts in the playground. Our library was turned into a classroom because there were more students than there was space. And as for textbooks, there were never, ever enough to go around. And so I learnt at a young age that Conservative governments didn't care enough about schools like mine or the kids I grew up with. My mum and dad were both primary school teachers and they worked around the clock to ensure that the children they taught got the very best start in life. I'm really proud of that. But they had to do it in the face of an uncaring, short-sighted and out-of-touch Conservative government. I joined the Labour Party because I wanted to change all of that. And it's still what drives me today. After 1997, the first election that I could vote in, everything changed because Labour made a difference. A Labour government, a Labour government that drove down class sizes and hospital waiting times, a Labour government that lifted millions of children and pensioners out of poverty, a Labour government that introduced the first ever national minimum wage. Conference, that is what a Labour government can do. And conference, we will do so again. And that is why it is such an honour to stand here today as your Shadow Chancellor under the leadership of Keir Starmer with a clear mission to recognise and release Britain's real wealth, the talent and effort of millions of people in every community across Britain who contribute so much and can achieve great things, who deserve a bit more recognition and a government that is on their side. That is Labour's vision, a vision that lies at the heart of the new approach to the economy that I will set out today. I'm here to talk about the economy, but not perhaps in a way that you would expect. Because our economy isn't just lines on a graph, distant from most people's lives. Our economy is about all of us, the places we live, the people we love, the work that we do, an intricate web in which we all play our part. I want to talk about those parts of the economy which form the very foundations of our communities. It's the businesses which give life to our high streets. It's the tens of million people who care for the young, the old and the disabled, who drive our buses and our trains and taxis to get us to work every morning, who make sure that we are provided with gas, electricity and water, who keep us safe from harm who make sure stock reaches our supermarket shelves, our schools, our hospitals and our care homes, and our most wanted of industries, rest upon these foundations. And the jobs in the industries of the future will too. It's what I call the everyday economy. It's what keeps Britain going and forms the beating heart of our community, even if too often that work is hidden from sight. Conference, just look at the state of things under the Tories. Empty shelves in our supermarkets, snaking queues at petrol stations, businesses waiting weeks for materials, the NHS forced to ration blood tests, government having to issue reassurance that they could even keep the lights on, real anxiety for families and for business. And Rishi Sunak, missing in action. This government, this government is incompetent. This government is in denial. This government are careless and they are chaotic and they are responsible for this mess. The Tories have lost control. These problems, these problems conference have been exposed by the government's Brexit deal, by their response to the pandemic, and by a failure to plan for either. But they are the long-term results 
of a government which doesn't care about the everyday economy, doesn't even understand how it works. Look at the pandemic. It wasn't the shareholders at outsourcing companies that got us through it. Our kids weren't banging pots and pans on the doorsteps for management consultants. No. What got us through was the millions who put their health at risk to do indispensable work. The care workers, the delivery workers, the cleaners, the supermarket workers, the staff in our NHS and in our schools and in all of our frontline services and conference. I am delighted to be joined in the front row by delegates who work in some of those industries. So all of you, to you and to the millions more across the country who work tirelessly in the most difficult of circumstances, on behalf of our movement and our country, we say thank you. But we don't just say thank you. We promise you that a Labour government will give you the respect that you deserve. But what does this Tory government do? A pay cut for key workers. £20 a week off of universal credit. And now their jobs tax. All this as food, fuel and energy bills soar. This government is out of touch. They have no idea about the challenges people are facing. And they have no respect for the people who have kept us going through this pandemic and keep our economy going. Here is an alternative. On Saturday, our deputy leader, Angela Rayner, set out Labour's new deal for all workers. Zero hour contracts banned, fire and rehire outlawed, sick pay increased, maternity pay, parental leave and flexible working from day one and a higher living wage with fair pay agreements going beyond the minimum. Security, fairness, dignity and respect. That is what a Labour government will do. But conference. It's not just our key workers losing out after 11 years of Tory misrule. I spent the best part of a decade working as an economist at the Bank of England. My job was to analyse how the economy performed. So let's have a look at the UK's economic performance. Even before the pandemic, growth rates falling behind our peers, productivity flatlining, our trade balance plummeting, the gaps between and within regions growing, inequality rising, pay growth stalling, and the Conservatives missing every one of the debt and deficit targets that they set for themselves. With, with inflation rocketing, with inflation rocketing now, people are feeling the squeeze at the supermarket checkout, at the petrol pump, and when their energy bills arrive as little luxuries fall further out of reach. We know that our national economy does well when our everyday economy is thriving. And let me tell you why. Because money that goes into the pockets of working people is money spent in our shops and our cafes and our restaurants, creating growth and bringing shared prosperity. And if we want to drive up Britain's productivity and wages with it, and it's not just a few firms at the top, but it's about all of our businesses, large and small, who need to be feeling the benefits of new technologies and new investment. And when our everyday economy is neglected, it creates insecurity, which leaves us exposed when a crisis hits. Let's look at the United States. They are enjoying the strongest recovery of any major economy built on the knowledge that wealth doesn't just trickle down from the top, but it comes from the bottom up and the middle out. But the Tories, they just don't get it. 
Instead of unlocking all of the untapped potential in every community, their instinct is to hold on to power and outsource responsibility to their corporate friends, to put short-term savings ahead of Britain's long-term economic security, to ignore inconvenient truths coming from employers as well as our trade unions, and to treat elected local, regional and national leaders with utter contempt. Because Tory ministers, Tory ministers arrogantly think that they know better than all of them. And then they have the goal, the goal to make working people foot the bill for their failings. We need to do things differently, to build a recovery that is strong and sustained and felt in every part of Britain, keeping wealth in our communities. Labour's approach will be based on working together with businesses, workers and public bodies pulling together in a national endeavour to rebuild Britain and seize the opportunities of the future. It's what Labour's plan to buy, make and sell more in Britain is all about. Using all tools at government's disposal to support businesses in this country, bringing jobs back to Britain, sorting out the government's supply chain chaos and not least, cleaning up the Tories' Brexit mess. So, so believe me when I say, I am more than happy to take on the Tories when it comes to economic competence, because I know we can win. This, this isn't a leap into the unknown. This is common sense. Why the Tory government in Westminster spent millions on Serco's failing test and trace programme. The Labour government in Wales, led by Mark Drakeford, built a highly effective contact tracing system, not by outsourcing, but working with local leaders and health experts. That's the new approach. That's the spirit of partnership. And that is how we build that stronger everyday economy. Last year, the government ripped up its own industrial strategy, just when it was needed most to shape the future of British industry after Brexit. Labour will lead a new era of industrial strategy, working hand in hand with trade unions and with businesses. This is about helping British business lead the world in the growing high-tech industries like life sciences, electric cars and renewable energy. But we will do something that's never been done before. We will have industrial strategies for the overlooked industries that make up our everyday economy. Sectors which never before have been the subjects of industrial strategies, like retail, hospitality and our care sector. The steps, the steps that I am outlining today represent an approach that is unapologetically pro-worker and unapologetically pro-business. This will mark a step change, a decisive shift towards the undervalued and the everyday. That conference is what a Labour government will do. And a fresh approach means we need to look again at how our tax system works. Good public services have to be paid for. But how we pay for them is a test of our values. Today, I want to share the principles that lie behind our approach to taxation. First, we will make the tax system fairer, ensuring that the burden isn't just falling on the wages of working people, but that those at the top pay their fair share too. <laughs> Conference, how can it possibly be right that the police constable on £27,000 a year, should be taxed at 32 pence in the pound. But someone making many times more from buying and selling shops and stocks and shares should pay just 20 pence in the pounds. That will not stand under Labour. I pledge 
that as Chancellor, I will not balance the books on the backs of working people. And here's our second principle. We will bring a laser focus to efficiency in our tax system. There are hundreds of different tax breaks. Some are important, but too many simply provide loopholes for those who can afford the best advice. And added together, they cost more than the entire NHS budget. So we will look at every single tax break. And if it doesn't deliver for the economy or for the taxpayer, then we will scrap it. And, and here are a couple. Here are a couple that we will scrap right away. Under the Conservative Party, private equity bosses who asset strip British businesses pay a lower rate of tax on their bonuses than their workers do on their wages. That is indefensible. We would scrap it. And here's another. Right now, private schools enjoy charitable status, which makes them exempt both from business rates and from VAT, at a cost to taxpayers of £1.7 billion every year. But conference, here's the truth. Private schools are not charities. And so we will end that exemption and put that money straight into our state schools, state schools like the one I went to. Conference, that is what a Labour government will do. And here's our third principle. We will support our high streets. Every single high street business is a labor of love and a product of courage and of determination that gives life to our everyday economy. They have faced huge adversity this last year and many are struggling right now with a cliff edge of rates relief coming up in March. Four out of five retail businesses are warning that they may have to close outlets if the government does not act. So today we are calling on government to freeze business rates next year, to increase the threshold for small business rates relief, giving small and medium-sized businesses in all sectors a discount next year. And conference, to pay for those measures, the government should increase the digital services tax to 12% in the next year to make sure online companies who have thrived during this pandemic are paying their fair share of taxes too. But the truth is, our whole system of business taxation is not fair and it's not fit for purpose. How can it be? when bricks and mortar high street businesses are taxed more heavily than online giants. High street businesses pay over a third of business rates, despite making up only 15% of our overall economy. But when Amazon's revenues went up by nearly two billion pounds last year, how much did their taxes go up by? Less than 1%. Conference, if you can afford to fly to the moon then you can afford to play your taxes here on planet Earth. So we will level the playing field and ease the burden on bricks and mortar businesses. Labour will take the bold action needed to support those businesses and make sure every community can enjoy a thriving high street. We will oversee the biggest overhaul of business taxation in a generation. So I can announce today that the next Labour government will scrap business rates altogether. And here, and here is our guarantee. The system that will replace it will incentivise investment, promote entrepreneurship, reward businesses that move into empty premises, and no public service or local authority will lose out from those changes. But most of all, it will make our system of business taxation fair. 
for the 21st century. Together, these principles of taxation, prizing fairness, efficiency, and support for business comprise our approach to funding our public services, one which will support hard work, enterprise, and adaptability, recognizing the value of work, demanding efficiency, supporting thriving high streets conference. That is what a Labour government will do. And I want to make one thing abundantly clear. We cannot have a return to the failed approach of austerity. It wouldn't deliver growth and it would be devastating for our public services. The next Labour manifesto will set out a plan to raise living standards and opportunities across Britain. But we cannot tolerate waste when it comes to public spending, especially when it comes to money wasted on outsourcing companies. So I promise you, I promise you, Conference, that the next Labour government will carry out the biggest wave of insourcing of public services in a generation. During the pandemic, £2 billion was spent on government contracts that were awarded to friends and donors of the Conservative Party. Conference, let's review some of the highlights of the Tories' pandemic outsourcing bonanza. £90 million to one firm that had donated £400,000 to the Conservative Party. Not a bad return on your investment, is it? £150 million to a financial services firm to produce 50 million face masks that couldn't even be used. £350 million to a company employing a sitting Conservative MP for test kits that had to be recalled. And £30 million to Matt Hancock's pub landlord. And every single one of those checks Every one of those checks signed by Rishi Sunak. <laughs> Conference, that is not what a Labour government would do. So, so I say today, to those who have secured COVID contracts but have failed to deliver, I give you notice, we want our money back. set up a team to go through every line of every failed contract and where value was not delivered and claw back every penny of taxpayers' money that we possibly can. Because that money doesn't belong in the pockets of friends and donors of the Conservative Party. It belongs in our police force, it belongs in our schools and it belongs in our National Health Service Conference. That is what a Labour government would do. We have a duty to pay careful attention to how public money is spent. Not for the sake of it, but because it is a question of respect. I know how hard people work for their wages and how carefully they manage their money. They rightly expect government to treat their money with the same respect. And it's about respect for our public services because we know the transformational difference that they can make. So we will bring an absolute commitment to value for taxpayers' money for every pound we spend and every policy we implement. But we won't stop there. The last Labour government granted operational independence to the Bank of England. It was a powerful and lasting co contribution to Britain's long-term economic security. And in 2010, George Osborne created the Independent Office for Budget Responsibility. Conference, it's thanks to the OBR that we know that the Tories have missed every one of their debt and deficit targets. So thanks, George, we'll keep that one. <laughs> the, next, the next Labour government, George Osborne, I don't think he's ever had a clap at Labour Party conference before. <laughs> 
the, the next Labour government will make its own contribution to Britain's economic architecture. Today, I can announce that Labour will create a new office for value for money. It will be tasked with keeping a watchful eye on how public money is spent and equipped with meaningful powers so that no government is allowed to mark its own homework. I do not take lightly the responsibility to see that public money is spent well and that public finances are kept under control. Let's be honest, that will involve difficult choices for me and for my colleagues. We will not shrink from those choices because growth, strong public finances and social justice must be built on firm foundations. Where the Tories have bought us ballooning debt, supply chain mayhem and spiralling inflation, we embrace fully our role as the party of long-term economic stability, of secure public finances and of economic growth. So with me in this role, Labour won't be making promises we can't keep or commitments that we can't pay for. That is why we will put in place fiscal rules that will bind the next Labour government to ensure that we always spend wisely and keep debt under control so that we have the means to transform schools, hospitals and communities and pay for investment in the new industries and jobs that our country desperately needs. That is what a Labour government will do. Now, of course, value for money means knowing when and where not to spend. But it also means knowing when and where to invest to prevent far greater costs further down the line. There is no better example of this than in the case of climate breakdown. The Office for Budget Responsibility is clear. The greatest cost to our public finances will be if we delay and let the costs mount up for future generations to pay. Delay means something else as well. It means missing out on the opportunities for British businesses to grow and lead the world and to make sure more of those good jobs of the future are based here. This is all part of our plan to buy, make and sell more in Britain. We will work across industries to tackle climate change putting fairness alongside our environmental obligations and ensure that the solutions are developed with workers and trade unions, not imposed upon them. As Chancellor, I will not shirk our responsibility to future generations. No dither, no delay. Labour will meet the challenge head on and seize the opportunities of the green transition. So let me tell you today what I would do as your Chancellor. I will invest in good jobs in the green industries of the future. Gigafactories to build batteries for electric vehicles, a thriving hydrogen industry, offshore wind with turbines actually made in Britain, planting trees and building flood defences, keeping homes warm and getting energy bills down. Good new jobs in communities throughout, throughout Britain. In other words, protecting and strengthening our everyday economy. And to make this a reality, to unlock that potential and protect our planet for future generations, I can announce today Labour's Climate Investment Pledge, an additional £28 billion of capital investment in our country's green transition for each and every year of this decade. I will be a responsible Chancellor. I will be Britain's first Green Chancellor. Conference, that is what a Labour government will do. Friends, I was born under Jim Callaghan's Labour government. Three happy months, 
but I wouldn't see another Labour government until I turned 18. I don't want my children to reach adulthood before they see a Labour government. I don't want them to grow up in a country that becomes more unequal and divided. I don't want them to grow up in a country where those who contribute the most go unrecognised. And I don't want them to grow up in a country that fails to rise to the challenge of the climate crisis. Our mission starts with the everyday economy, with valuing and supporting people, businesses and industries, which kept Britain going before the pandemic, have done so throughout and will continue to do so. Overworked, underpaid, taken for granted, but conference not with Labour. Labour will tax fairly, spend wisely, and get our economy firing on all cylinders. Hard work met with fair reward, investment in our schools and in our NHS, action to match the scale of the climate crisis, strong and lasting growth for every part of Britain, working together to meet the challenges of the future. Now that is what a Labour government will do. Thank you, conference. Thank you.